So you want to pass the PCNSE. That's great. My name is Jason, and I'm with the Global Enablement Team at Palo Alto Networks. In this segment, I want to show you the inside scoop behind the PCNSE exam so you have an idea of what to expect, what resources are available, and some tips and tricks to help you conquer the exam. Let's dive in. Let's begin at the very beginning with the big question, why get certified? Why the PCNSE? Because the world needs you. It needs experts in Palo Alto Network's next generation firewalls. The next generation firewall has become a favorite choice of security professionals around the globe, which in turn makes the certification growing in significance and value. Just do a search on your favorite job site and see for yourself. You'll notice many opportunities that focus on the next generation firewall. And if you're still on the fence and not sure if you want to go to the trouble of studying for another exam, let me mention that the exam is a great way to distinguish yourself. Getting certified means you have a third-party testimony to your expertise. In fact, the word certify is an old word, and it means to be a witness or to vouch for, as in a courtroom. Being certified, then, gives you something that can speak on your behalf. Now, it's not easy. But with some preparation, it's not hard either. Not only that, but being a PCNSE means you can wear this cool jacket. I bet you have some questions. Want to know how long the exam is or where to register? First things first. To get started, check out the FAQ on the Palo Alto Network's website. Here, you'll get answers to some common questions like, How many questions are on the exam? How much does it cost? Can I retake the exam if I fail? Those types of things. The FAQ spells it all out, even each exam domain area for you. So this is the first place I would start. Now let me share with you the magic formula. If you follow this equation, you'll pass the exam. And it's really simple. Prepare, practice, review, and relax. Do those four things and you'll be ready to pass the PCNSE. The rest of this video, I'm going to explore each one of these areas. First things first, you got to prepare. You can't make coffee without grinding beans, and that's the first secret to passing any exam. The grind of preparation. Here are three sources you can start using for that preparation. A free study guide, classes, and online resources. I want to stop and take a deep look into the study guide, because it's fantastic. You'll find the study guide on the Palo Alto Network's education page on their website. Same place you'll find the FAQ. Just do a Google search. It's easy. Now, once you find it, you'll want to make this one of your primary preparation tools. And it's easy to see why. A quick glance at the table of contents shows you it has information on each of the exam domain areas. It's informative. It's visual. It contains links to additional resources. It even has sample questions. Instructor-led training is another great way to prepare and get a jump start on the exam. Now, the minimum class I recommend is the official 210 class titled Firewall Essentials. If you can, it's also a good idea to take a panorama class and the troubleshooting class. Panorama is a big topic on the exam, and troubleshooting, of course, is also an important domain area. Now, also take note of the asterisk items here. The class titles and numbers, well, those get revised occasionally, so you might be looking at different numbers. And the courses themselves don't necessarily cover everything that you need to know for the PCNSE, but it covers a lot. Now, a good instructor-led class will not only provide you breadth, but also depth. And if you can't take one of these courses, then be sure you substitute it with your own in-depth study, hands-on practice, and the administrator guides. The nice thing about these courses is they are a structured journey into the key features of the products. And if you can take a class from Palo Alto Networks or take a class from one of their authorized partners, you won't regret it. All right, final place to go to get prepared for the exam are online resources. And we have a lot of resources, a lot of documentation. Um, these are really going to help you. We've got uh, four here, tutorials, live community, the admin guides, the CLI cheat sheet. Just a couple of comments about each one of these. All of these are going to be helpful to getting answers and expanding your knowledge and filling in gaps. 
So we've got tutorials, for instance. These are a lot of how-to types of videos, a wide range of different types of uh, videos, especially focused on uh, the next generation firewall. We have the live community, a lot of help here in regards to troubleshooting and additional documentation and explanation. And you can use these not just for documentation or just for reading, of course. Uh, you can also use these for how to fuel for your own practice and your exercises. Same thing can be said about the admin guide. The admin guide is a very thorough body of information. There's a lot of details in there, so it's useful, especially to reference. And then the CLI cheat sheets. These are great to print out or even make your own CLI cheat sheets because there are definitely going to be a few CLI commands that come up on the exam. That wraps up the first step in the magic formula of passing the exam. That is to prepare to go deep in the study guide, take a great class, explore those online resources. Now, before we do the next step, let's do something fun. Let's do a sample question here, just to give you a taste of the kinds of things you need to know. Now, this question here, what I encourage you to do is pause uh, the screen. If you're not sure what the answer is, maybe even take a moment to use one of those online resources and to research the answer. So go ahead, pause the video right now. So how well did you do? Well, let's find out. The correct answer is C, nat traversal. All right. Now let's do another question. How well did you do with this one? Correct answer is B, show system info. Now let me encourage you, use those online resources. You'll have some CLI questions. Use that CLI quick start guide and use that for some practice. Oh, and most of you professionals know this already, but as a quick reminder, please don't participate in brain dumps. It hurts everybody. If you're looking for the magic bullet or a shortcut to passing the exam, this is it. This is the second step in our magic formula, and that is hands-on. Hands-on is key. After all, the intention of the exam is to test your competency with the product. So the more you practice with the firewall and with Panorama, the stronger you'll be when taking the test. What if you don't have a firewall to practice with? Well, you have multiple options. First, talk to your sales rep or a Palo Alto Networks SE. They may be able to provide you with an evaluation firewall and a virtual machine. Second thing you can do is contact a third-party lab provider, such as the NetDev Group. The NetDev Group provides online labs for students and for universities. Third, if you take a class, take advantage of those labs. And finally, you can often get hands-on with the latest features at events and conferences. The more hands-on, the better. How about another sample question? Again, pause the video, read through this, and take your best stab at it, or better yet, use some online resources and answer the question. How well did you do here? Well, the answer is reverse DNS lookup. Now, this reminds me of another study tip. When reading a question on the exam, I like to read the answers first, then read the entire question. Reading the answers first is a quick way to acquire the context, but you don't want to forget you must read the entire question too, because you don't want to miss anything. The next step in the formula is review. Make sure you give yourself enough time to review what you've been studying. You don't want to rush it, so you want to make sure you give yourself adequate time and only take the test after you've done enough review. But you don't want to wait too long either. So the key is to work through some material, work through a section, then review, 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 and then work on another section, always reviewing earlier sections as you go along. Review is critical because it reinforces the memory structures holding that information in your brain. So create a strategy for reviewing as you prepare and as you learn. Now this actually reminds me of another great study tip. Write your questions, create your own questions as you study. This way you can quiz yourself later on or even have a friend and colleague quiz you. Now this is one great strategy for reviewing what you've learned. I do this and it really works for me. The other thing I like to do is share my questions. So if I have some friends and peers who are also studying for the exam, I like to write these questions so we can work through them together. Now here's another tip. 
and that's to get more tips. There's just so many tips to list here in this short video. So many tricks to learning, like studying while you exercise, or turning off your phone to avoid distractions, or using some sort of post-it system, etc., etc., etc. So instead of listing all of these tips, let me suggest that you do some research and study of your own on different types of tips and techniques. You might be surprised with what you learn. You might even find a new system which works really well for you, but may not work for others. So do some research on how to study. Okay, let's do another sample question. Again, pause the video. The correct answer is B, use included groups filter. Now this is an example of some information that's useful for also troubleshooting. So for instance, if I'm not seeing the groups that I'm expecting, maybe I'm filtering them out inadvertently. So be sure you also understand the material from a troubleshooting point of view. How about one more? Here's another sample question. How well did you do with this one? Device groups. Now this actually reminds me of another study tip. Don't forget about Panorama. Don't forget about the log collectors. Don't forget to study all of the features in the firewall, including those features you may not be using. For example, don't forget about user ID, decryption, global protect. Don't forget about the new features in the new operating system either, especially if you're someone who's already experienced with the firewall. Be sure you do your, your, your homework. Be sure you do that additional research. You know, whenever I host a testing event, there's often a candidate who seems surprised to find questions on this feature or that feature. But you know what? That only demonstrates they didn't do their homework first and they didn't reference the study guide. So don't make that mistake. Yeah, I know. Exams, they're not fun. And they can be stressful. This is why it's important to be intentional about managing the stress. So do lots of practice. I find the more prepared I am, the less stressed I become. And get plenty of rest. It's also important to sleep well the night before the exam. Eat well, exercise, take care of yourself, and stay positive. Look forward to the end of the exam because it's worth it. That's it. With hard work and preparation, with the help of the study guide and, and the study tips, with lots of hands-on and lots of review, and with a chilled out attitude, you're ready to schedule that exam. You're ready to take it and conquer it. One last tip. When taking the exam, manage your time. Don't rush, but don't linger either. When I take the test, I like to answer the easy questions first, and then I go back review those hard questions later. Now, if you go too fast through the exam, be sure you stop and review all of your answers. Use all of the time that's been given to you. You don't want to rush the exam and risk misreading the questions. So use the entire clock. Let me be the first to congratulate your future self on passing the PCNSE exam. You deserve it. Passing any exam is a milestone achievement and you deserve to celebrate. So celebrate once you pass the exam. Share your results on Facebook and LinkedIn and tell your story. And if you didn't pass the first time, don't be discouraged. Go back and study again and study very soon. Don't wait too long to do a retake. Now, once you pass, you can access your digital badge on the CERT Metrics website. This is a great way to do that humble brag on social networking like Facebook and LinkedIn. And I can't wait to read your stories. So that's it, my friends. I hope this was helpful. I hope you found some useful tips. Remember, use that study guide. Prepare, practice, review, and relax. Until next time, stay secure.